Bonjour et bienvenue à French Madness with Rav. Hello and welcome to French Madness with Rav. In this video, we are going to talk about TEF, which is Test d'Evaluation de Francais. So in this video, we will talk about how much marks are needed to pass the exam, how could you prepare yourself for TEF, what you could expect from the test, how you could train yourself for each section of the test, what is the total length of the test, when could you expect your results, and when could you retake the exam. So I just want you guys to know that I'm making this video as I'm a DELF certified French professor. I've trained a lot of students for TEF, TCF, and DELF, and I upload French lessons on my channel so that you could benefit from it and you can learn French. And I also give classes to prepare you for your diverse French needs. So if you ever want to contact me for classes, you could contact me on Facebook at French Madness with Rav, or you could contact me on Instagram at French Madness with Rav. Okay, so the TEF format comes in four sections. The first one is listening. So we'll discuss each section in detail. So we'll now begin with listening. So listening is also called compréhension orale. In compréhension orale, um, the length of the section is 40 minutes, in which you have to complete 60 questions, and the maximum number of points you could get is 360 points. So what happens in the listening part of the test is that you get to hear two audio clips. One is small and one is big. So what happens in the small one, um, it's usually very short. It often has an image associated with it, and you get to hear the text twice. Um, in, in rare cases, you might only be able to hear the text once, but usually you get to hear the test, um, the, the clip twice. So, um, so pretty easy. This one is pretty easy to crack, um, not too complicated, but I'll just advise that start working on all the accents because you might get any accent in your test. It might not just be French accent. It could also be Southern accent. It could also be Quebecois. So start working on all the accents so that it, you are able to understand the listening section well. So the second part of the um, listening, listening section is the is, is a big audio clip. Um, it's a little long and a little complicated, but if you have trained yourself well, it will not be complicated for you. What other topics could be real life situations like politics, interviews, some debates, some radio conversations, um, etc. So the tricky part is you only get to hear the audio once. So we have to make sure that we are listening very well and then we are very attentive and we are transferring your answers on time. So. Um, a note here for you to consider is that the test you on different French accents that we just talked about could be Southern accent, could be Quebecois, could be French native, like um, from France. So um, one more catch, that the exam is continuous for 10 minutes. So you have to listen, transfer answers. Again, listen, transfer answers. You don't get any break. So 40 minutes nonstop. Okay. How could you train yourself for the listening part? You could watch French movies. Some examples are Le Petit Nicolas, very helpful for a beginner, so that, that's really good. You could also uh, watch movies like Les Intouchables, also very helpful. La Vida d'Elle, again, very helpful for you. Um, there's one episode, like one series as well, that I'd like to mention is, um, if on you could easily find that on YouTube, that's Extra, it's called French Extra episode. If you type that, you'll be able to um, get all the parts of that series. It's very helpful. Um, it's actually for beginners, so you will be able to understand it um, very nicely. If you're a beginner, um, just, just take a look up at the subtitles and then you, you'll be good to go. And then slowly and slowly, you'll be able to understand different accents and you could understand complex movies as well. And then you could give it a try to watch the movie without subtitles. So that's gonna help you a lot. And then you could also watch French pod podcasts if you like podcasts. Okay. The second section is the reading section, which is also called Compréhension Écrite. 60 minutes long, you get 50 questions, 300 points. Okay, what's there in this section? So all multiple choice questions, or probably one word answers. So um, 50 multiple choice questions, the difficulty level with, you will keep rising with each question. So you'll get the easy ones first, and then you get the difficult ones, and then you get the more difficult ones. So it, it, it keeps on increasing. What could the questions be like? They could be small passages or conversations. Um, you have to choose, the, you, you might be asked to choose the best answer. You might be asked to find the mistake, etc. Four sections, 10 questions, wherein you have to recognize the type, 
the function in the origin of the document. What's the type of the document? Okay, um, is it a an, um, is an article? Is it an is it is it a part of an article? A letter? What type of the document is it? A kakhtostel. You just have to identify what's the type. What is the function? What is it asking you something? Is it giving you information? Uh, is it making you aware? What's the, what's the function? What is the text doing? What's the origin of the document? Was it published in the newspaper? Um, is it part of a novel? So you just have to identify it. You have to um, tell them what's the origin of the document, which will definitely be there. And the questions you just have to seek and find an answer. So section B, again, 10 questions. You have to understand in detail various documents. You'll have to determine the author's intentions. Why did the author write this? Is he wanting us to be aware? Is he warning us? Is he giving us information? What is? What are the intentions of the author? Are there any arguments made? Are there any illusions? What's the style and what's the, you'll have to identify the register of the language used. So part C, um, again, 10 questions wherein you have to understand the logic of the document. Part D, 10 questions, you have to understand the general meaning of a sentence and various ways of phrasing it. Again, there's a note for you here. They're gonna test you on your proficiency. They're gonna test you on grammar. They're gonna test you on language structure, conjugation and spellings. So make sure you're, you prepare yourself really well. How could you train yourself for the reading section? Make sure you regularly read all types of text, which could include newspaper articles, excerpts from novels, classified ads, cooking recipes, or you could maybe just read an article on your phone and on Google in French. So that's gonna help you a lot. What will it do to us? It will help us to read quickly. It would help us to find important information and it would help us to enrich our vocabulary. All of this is gonna help us boost our confidence on the day of the test. Okay. Section C is the writing section, which is also called expression écrite. Um, there are two questions in this, in this uh, section. The first question is probably a small email, which you might have to write. It could be a text message. It could be a postcard. Um, you might be asked to ask your friend to join you for a vacation. You might be asked to invite your friends or family just in celebration. It could be a baby shower. It could be a birthday party. It could be anything, just, just, just normal get together. So um, they might give you two lines of a story and they would ask you to complete the rest of the story, wherein you have to identify the tenses. Okay, are they telling, are like, the two lines that they've given you, are they in the past tense? Is it, are they talking about an event that already happened or are they are telling us about an event that is going to take place? So you have to identify the tense. Is it in the past tense? Is it in the present tense? Is it gonna be in the future? And then you, you have to write the story in that particular tense. And then, um, what you have to do here is, okay, the second question is usually an argumentative letter, or you could be asked to write an article. So um, this is, um, so in, in this, um, like in the total writing section, you get 60 minutes for both the questions. You have to divide the time equally within the required time. My advice would be to give 20 minutes to this and 40 minutes to this, because this has, uh, question number two has a lot of weightage. So it's, it's better to uh, give more time to question number two. Um, so it, it's just that uh, start, um, it, it would be helpful if you read some articles and then so you could be, you know, able to draft um, an argumentative letter in the exam. You could be able to write an article. So this is pretty easy. This gets a little, little complicated. Okay, how are they gonna assess you? They're gonna assess you on how well you communicate a message clearly. Are you clear on what you're saying? That's what they're gonna assess you on. Are you able to give the information that they're asking? Are you able to justify a choice? Are you able to justify a position? Are you able to justify a decision, et cetera? Are you able to summarize and rephrase? Um, you are supposed to express your point of view clearly and you're supposed to argue it. Are you able to describe, narrate, and explain? Can you link ideas together? That's what they're gonna assess you on. Could you compare two points of views? That's what they're gonna test you on. Are you able to use your vocabulary? So that's something um, you need to work on on your writing section. Most probably on question number two. So um, the more you practice, the better you get. Um, and then we're gonna proceed further. How could you train yourself for the writing section? It's good to adopt a habit of writing short text, letters or articles frequently. Um, you could watch debates, you could watch news, etc., which would encourage you to express what you feel. Write on your point of views in bullet points and then draft your text later on. So when you're watching news, 
um, you could just um, grab a pen and paper and then um, you could write down, okay, this is this idea is what I like to, um, you know, talk to myself more about. So write that down in bullet point. And the next idea, this is what I'm going to talk to myself about. Okay, the third idea, this is what I'm going to talk to myself about. And then once you're done, you have a, you have a big subject then. So ask yourself to write an article. Let's say you're a, you're, you, you want to write an article and that's going to be published in the newspaper. So write an article as if it's going to be published in the newspaper. Make sure you have a good start. You have a debut. Nice starting. You have a body when you talk about the advantages, when you talk about the disadvantages. So that, that's really important to have a proper structure of your writing section. Um, start. Nice start. You cannot just start talking about the topic. You have to have a good start. You have to have a body. You have to describe what's going on. And then you have to talk about the advantages, the disadvantages. And are you able to conclude it nicely? It should have a nice ending. That's what you're going to be assessed on. And then you could also search for questions or topics for articles and letters on the internet and then try to respond to them. Later on, you could see the solution and check how well have you performed. That's going to tell you where you like, what are your weak points, where you lack, and then you're going to write that down and work on those areas later on. Again, I keep saying to all of my students, the more you write, the better you get. The more you practice, the better you get. Okay, the last section is speaking, which is also called expression oral. 15 minutes for this section, two topics, 450 points for this one. Two questions. The first one, tell me about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? What do you like? What do you hate? What do you do in life? Are you a student? Do you work? Okay, if you're a student, what do you study? Okay, if you work, where do you work? All about that. And then the second question is usually a role play question wherein you have to ask a lot of questions, probably around eight to 10 to seek for, like to seek more, more information. For example, um, you will be asked to call a train station to inquire, inquire about train schedules. Okay, um, hi there, when is this train gonna come? I need to know when is this train coming? What are the, I want to make a selection of seats probably. That's, that's what you could say. What seats do you have available? One question. What, what are the timings? Second question. What are the dates that this, the, this train comes? So third question, like this, you have to draft uh, probably eight to 10 questions and ask the examiner. You will be playing a role with the examiner. Um, so you have to ask the question to the examiner so that the whole point of second of, of this, this thing is, in fact, all of this is that you want to show to the examiner that you know French. You don't have to have difficult, you know, heavy vocabulary words. Just make sure you are, um, you are very, you're very, you're able to express your point of view in the simplest words with accurate grammatical structure. Do not um, look for heavy vocabulary words. If you're good in French, definitely go for it. But I would, I would always, um, I always do it to my students. Like I always recommend and I always advise to my students. And that's what I'm going to tell you as well. Um, the best way to succeed in this is to choose the simplest of sentences with the accurate, with the 100% correct grammatical structure. So, or you could be asked here that someone's looking for a nanny and you saw the advertisement and then you're applying for the job and you have to contact them for questions. For example, um, how many members are in the family? That's one question you can ask. Um, how many hours do you need the nanny for? Is it a part-time job? Is it a full-time job? Second question. The third question could be, um, how old is the baby? Third question. Fourth question. What is the baby like? Fifth question. Could be, how much are you going to pay me? So questions like this, it has to be instant. So this is the tricky part that I'm going to tell you about, that you only get one minute to prepare for the second question. In Delph, you get 15, 10 to 15 minutes to prepare for the question. But this is probably, um, you know, quite instant. So you would only get a minute to prepare for this one. Make sure you're, you're very good in French so that you don't have to, um, you know, feel scared or anything. You should be good to go with this. Okay, how are they going to assess you on um, speaking section? They're going to see how well you present yourself. Are you able to share your opinion? What's in your mind? Are you able to bring that out of your mouth? Um, how are your sentences? Are they grammatically structured or are they not? Um, how well can you express your convic conviction? Um, how clearly do you speak? So again, um, there's a bonus thing here. You will never be judged on your accents, accent because people, uh, different people speak different accents. They're only gonna test you on how clearly you speak. So that's a good thing here. And how could you train yourself for the speaking section? 
You could change your Siri or Google Assistant to French. That's a very interesting thing, um, I would say. And you could adapt a habit of conversing with it every day on mundane topics. That's going to be very helpful. You could change your Alexa's language to French and ask her questions in French and try to understand her accent, style of speaking, and the way of responding, which will definitely help you sound like a, a native person. You could talk to yourself in the mirror. That's what I did. Um, I used to talk to myself in the mirror. So that's going to boost up your confidence a lot. So talk to yourself in the mirror as if someone else is standing in front of you and try to convince yourself on some topics. So that's going to help you a lot again. Okay, there are again a few more important things to remember. You get additional points for French if you're able to clear TEF. You're going to get you're going to get additional points for the permanent residency of Canada um, if you apply your file in the Express Entry Portal. That's going to help you. The total marks needed to pass are 1,076 out of 1,560 points. Um, the minimum level requirement to pass BTEF is NCLC7, which is also called CLB7. CLB7 is the Canadian level benchmark, which is seven points. Um, the tests are evaluated using a seven level scale from zero, which is the most basic skill, to level six, which is complete proficiency. Validity, two years. You get the results within four to six weeks. If you're not happy with your results, you could retake the exam after 60 days. Okay, perfect. And that's all about today's video. If you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below, or you could send me a message if you're willing to take up classes with me. Um, you could contact me again on French Madness with Rav on Facebook or on Instagram. And if you would like to learn French, um, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be happy to help you. Merci, au revoir. Bye.